Sisters, greetings to all our viewers all across uh, the globe. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Yemi Adebaya. Well, it's the day before Christmas. I think it's only fitting to say Merry Christmas in advance. Hope you're enjoying the season. Of course, we're here to help you do just that, make you relax, entertain you as much as possible, inform you on what is happening in your amazing world of sports. Once again, I will say thank you. Uh, and of course, we appreciate the fact that uh, you're always tuned in uh, to this program. It's a privilege that we will never take for granted. And there's a promise to you that we will always, always give our best whenever um, we step to the scene. All right, so there's a lot to talk about today. The Women's uh, Professional Football League, the NWPL Premiership, takes center stage. We'll talk about the results. There's a fallout of uh, CAF. Interclub competition um, for Nigeria uh, wasn't good for Abai Elephants yesterday. We talked about that on the show. Rivers United uh, were able to surprise uh, a lot of people going to South Africa, Ryder and Bloemfontein, getting a 2 0 victory. That also get us talking on the show. Uh, another managerial casualty to talk about on the show tonight. Thomas Tuchel has been sacked as. Uh, coach of French money backs, Paris Saint-Germain. And of course, who is the man that is poised to take over that job? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Mauricio Pochettino is in the news. Will he be the man? We only have to wait, but we hear that uh, negotiations are in advanced stage uh, for the Argentine to probably take over that role. We'll also spare it out for uh, the EFL Cup. That's the Carabao Cup in England. So that's the outlook of um, the show today. And uh, lest I forget, we'll also continue with our series that we started on the show as we approach the start of the 2020-2021 MPFL season. We'll continue that I mean, that series that we have started, Know Your Club. So we'll be profiling two clubs on the show tonight. Uh, we'll let you know all the things you need to know about those clubs and what they've been doing, even though the year has been severely impacted by COVID-19. So that's it. Let me introduce uh, my partner on the show today. Bolo Omoni joins me this lovely Thursday evening. It's the day after the big day, actually. So there's a lot to say. But Bolo, I want to welcome you. Uh, to the show today. Well, um, good to be here again. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, fully packed, show, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, while some men are sleeping, so women are already active <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> with their game. The shock sacking of uh, mm -hmm. a manager today, and uh, it's interesting. The beauty of football is there's always something to talk about, mm -hmm. and even now, aside football, sports in general, general yeah. you'll always have one or two things. If there are no good news, there will always be something controversial mm -hmm. to give headlines, and uh, it's always a good day to talk sports again. Yeah, it makes our job easy, by the way. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the ladies, and uh, Bolu has uh, quite rightly hinted that uh, while the guys are struggling to get the show on the road, the ladies are already doing it. So let, let's start off with uh, the results. And Bolu will tell us the stories uh, around the results. Let's start with what you have on your sc screen. Confluence Queens, um, slim one new victory over Nasrallah Amazons. You have Bayesa Queens uh, beat uh, FC Robo Queens by the same um, scoreline. Uh, Ocean Babes defeated Pelican Stars 3 0. You have Ebom Angels uh, beat Royal Queens 2 1. And um, all of this is match day three results. Abia Angels uh, defeated uh, Dream Stars ladies. I, I was hoping they would be donating points <laughs> left, right, and center. I don't know. It's early days yet. Edo Queens played a one-all draw with Rivers Angels. And um, Delta Queens uh, defeated Sunshine Queens 1-0. So that's it. Bolu, your, your, your thoughts on... Um, any surprising result? Maybe I should start that way. Well, um, Robo Queens or FC Robo or Robo Queens of Lagos, whichever way you decide to call them, they finally lost the game after mm -hmm. picking up impressive wins in their first two games. But early days, they say of football, but it was a surprising loss. They played so well. For, uh, they could have won that game, but they fluffed their chances. And in football, it is not who played the game that won. It is who scored the most yeah. goals and decided to win. One new, you goals can say it's three, but three points is the most important mm -hmm. thing. And they lost that three points. Then Ibo Mingels picked up another impressive victory. Three straight the women's league is getting interesting, but like you said about Dream Stars, probably they are the donors for this season, just losing and losing. But again, they would not lose 
Every three awesome. says they will have one or two victories. I think I'm liking the results so far. Um, the one of the best teams we have in the women's football, Rivers Angels, still maintaining their okay, draw, loss, uh, draw, win. Mm -hmm. They are still private uh, maintaining. I think they are just two teams with three straight wins so far. Um, step by step, the league is getting interesting. And again, I believe it is one of the things that is inspiring the guys that we have to start at all costs. No matter what the protocol says, no matter whatever new one is thinking, we must start the league. Even though the last report from the LFC is, we will meet with the PTF. No, we have met with, this is what they said, we will. This is Thursday. And this is Thursday. And the we're game starting is on meant Sunday. to be on Sunday. And the last report from the referees association is nothing has been yeah. said to them where the deal and um, red strike is meant to at least stream no matter what stream match they want we've not heard any report from them ptf has still not said anything about it we are not even talking about the regulations yet because remember the regulations you must have 200 million naira to be sure you pay player salaries mm -hmm. all the contractual terms between players and club we must see them if you are signing anybody we must know the years the details all those things are not even ready yet so i think i heal the women i respect them uh, this is what you say uh, you call talk and do yes. they say we'll start certain days if the some clubs are not ready we we'll send them out some teams are, it's a normal thing now two or three of them are in the lower division now the main division have started match day three we are seeing goes the hero for uh, the, today was um, Yemisi. Mm -hmm. She got a brace in the uh, Ocean Babes 3 nil win. I think, and the interesting thing is, if you follow their social media handles, their reports come almost immediately after the game. You see a graphical display of the results. Then in a few hours, you see the uh, review of the entire match day. And it make, that makes our own life easy. Very easy. You can get your stats. You don't, you don't have to start making calls. You don't have conflicting figures. Waiting for someone to send you a match report. And one one media everything. officer arguing with <laughs> you about and information you put yeah. out that is not really correct and all that. All right, we're going to get to the guys later on. There's a lot to, to talk about uh, concerning the guys. But let's talk about what happened yesterday. We didn't have much time on the show yesterday to, to, you know, to fully look at what, what transpired um, mixed fortunes for Nigerian clubs on the continent. Let's start with uh, the CAF Champions League, J just in case you missed it. You know, just in case you missed it, let's just give you a confirmation of uh, the result. Sad day for the Abai elephants in Sudan, and um, it was a loss. Uh, it's not the loss that is painful. It's the manner of the loss, if you've seen the clips. It's, it's the manner of the loss that is really painful. Some atrocious defending and some... I, I, I have to hold myself back, you know, not to say something like this, but it's just really, really... Um, pay for that, but as a result, first leg, a, a, a lot of things can still happen. You know, we, we've seen people were quick to remind me the, the time I told them, Oh, I've seen teams club their way back in the Champions League 4 nil. I cited Deportivo, uh, and you know, they, they told me it's not the Champions League, uh, the, you know, Liverpool and all that. But your take on, on, on that game yesterday? Well, uh, first off, uh, I wanted to put out the video, but, uh, you know, copyright, copyright issues. You, you have to be careful. But if you've seen the clip, I said to myself, were well, they playing the one one eight formation? Because I was looking for the defenders, I could not see them. And uh, surprisingly, I was shocked Kyrie was not even in the starting lineup. They had injury problems. Victor Boma uh, picked up injury in the second leg in Mizra Imo. Um, Cyril couldn't play that game. Imo could not travel with them as well. But I thought this game, at least, go out with your best leg. The mm -hmm. best leg you have available. Then they defend. Some call this schoolboy defender. I said that was worse than schoolboy defender. Just one pass and the entire Imba defense was gone. I thought Imba would... Maybe at worst get a draw. We know America are not easy. The fact that they're playing at home in Sudan, but this is a Yimba. Oh, a slim margin loss. Yeah, two one, one nil at least. It's low. We've seen a Yimba come back, but I tell them the, I've seen a Yimba score five at home. But those games they scored lots of goals. Some of them or most of them were first leg games. Then the second leg just go there, and the ones they even lost in the first leg. Maybe one one, one nil, right. three nil. Now they have to score at least four goals to progress. And the four goals four means at, uh, goals. They can, if they concede one, they need five again. Yeah. That's more. Uh, Marek just need to come to a bar and just chill. Let him do all the playing. Sit back. If they lose two nil, they know they are still progressing to the next round. They can survive. But the only good news I'm picking from this is the last time they were at this stage, 
they dropped, they lost the game, dropped to the CAF Confederations Cup, progressed to the group seed and got to the semi-final. When they, they helped Nigeria get back the second slot. So maybe if they lose this, they may end up going far or probably winning the CAF Confederations Cup. All right. I don't see them progressing to the next round. Okay, that, that's Bolu's verdict. Let's get another um, perspective to that. Um, Aikode Ojekere joins us now. We wanted to have this conversation yesterday. Um, technology didn't allow it to happen, but we're having it today. Aikode, good evening. It's, ha it's good to have you join us uh, on the show tonight. I'm excited. Uh, thank you very much for having me on the show tonight. All right. Um, let us, let's just talk about it. You, you've probably listened to some of the things we've said already, but I want to get your take on what happened yesterday. You've seen the clips and um, to had, um, after telling us what you think happened, then your verdict, it's, it's, is it still redeemable for the Abai elephants? Um, I, 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 I was, um, I couldn't close my mouth when, you know, speaking of Yoruba Mola Anule, you know, when I was watching that, um, clip, uh, yesterday, um, it's the weakest in basketball I have watched since, um, the early 2000 when the club became a powerhouse. Um, I don't want to say the worst, um, in selection I've seen, uh, but then, um, that, that was the weakest, um, in basketball I've watched. Um, there was no defense, defense thing that exist the goalkeeping um i i used to be a goalkeeper <laughs> you know I, I wonder where they got that i looked at his stats the biggest club he's played for obviously cotton for uh perhaps that's why Aimba signed him but my question is um when you have a femi a femi coyote who was in goal for lobby stars um during this same competition and um lobby got to the group stage um if you missed them um, some game due to injury uh, but the question is um why keep femi on the bench when you're going to play in Sudan, you go with your best squad. Um, whether you're playing, uh, we all know uh, the national team is uh, made of Al Hilal and um, and uh, Al Marek. Um, you're going to play Al Marek, and you go with um, um, some players who look like schoolboys to me. The defense didn't exist. One one long uh, pass, and um, the central defenders Dafo and Abubakar were looking confused. Um, and this goal and, and the Togolese goalkeeper. Uh, so you you just wonder. Uh, the same, the same, the same thing happened. The first goal, the same, uh, uh, the, the same thing that happened again when the second goal. The central defenders were looking confused. The central, the same thing, the, the full pass were nowhere to be seen, and the goalkeeper obviously um, lacked ideas uh, in, in goalkeeping. And and Malik just had a, had um, a day, got a hat trick, um, a good one for him. I mean, you don't when 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 your defense um, allows a striker like that to um, to get the ball, he deals with you. That's the truth. Uh, uh, he was in that squad in 2018 when we played in the Chan. I remember in the semifinals we beat um, Sudan, the, the, the Super Eagles, and uh, he was in that squad. So you look at the development of players in um, in, in, in Sudan, and, and you see consistency. You don't see consistency here. Toshi Omoyale played for Plato United um, two years, jumped to Aimba. How much has it delivered for Aimba? We're yet to see because he also needs to settle down. He's not a magician. So you look at you, you, you now want to ask questions. Um, those they got to replace. Um, um, if 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 Basa Jerry is a replacement for Tuofilosa Felokai, who left for Rivers United, it means that Imba doesn't have a goalkeeper. And you want to ask the, if the goalkeeper coach and the head coach of the team, you know, uh, um, all agree that um, Basa should be in goal for that day. Then it also means that um, we also have to they also have to also have to ask the coaches some questions. You've got a big man like uh, Kayode who covers the goalpost. Um, He's like a basketballer, and you leave him out on the bench. Uh, you look at the bench again, um, Okorom was on the bench. Uh, Austin Oladabo was on the bench. So who, was, who, who and who will get any goals for Aimba if you had all these guys on the bench? And you look at the attack, Anayo, B, Abubakar, the defense was not existing. I mean, any move by, by any long pass, trouble. I mean, you just begin to have um, uh, hold your chest and wonder if um, every move will lead to a goal. Is it redeemable? Um, the last time Imba played the Sudanese club, um, it was Al Marek. He was goalless in Abba. Uh, Al Mar uh, sorry, Al Hilal. Uh, it was goalless in Abba. Al Hilal won in Sudan. If a team beats you 3 0, it's going to be a, it's a very, it's a, big, it's a big mountain to climb. But will Al Marek sit down and allow Imba score three goals? They're also going to come out of Imba to get goals. That's the truth. Um, as a Nigerian, I want Imba to qualify. But we're talking football here with what we saw in the first leg. 
Is it possible? I mean, we need to ask the coaches. Uh, it's their job to turn things around. Do they have the quality? Do they have the, the, can they turn these around? We all want to see him qualify. But if the way they played in the first leg is uh, what was good to see in the second leg, it means they can't qualify. That's the truth about it. The big teams in, in the Champions League win away. Mazembe won away. Uh, um, um, Esperance drew away. If you want to play in the Champions League, you must play like champions. I mean, in by the way, champions 2003-2004, um, some people were not born that time. Since then, they've not shown that power. They've not shown that championship characteristics. That is truth. And when you're going to play, like, you don't lose like this if you want to be champions of the, if you want to win the Champions League. Al, 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 Al Ali had issues with um, some players who had, um, you know, issues with COVID-19 who tested positive. So they went to, uh, uh, um, they went to um, Niger and they won away. So if you want to win away, you must have a tight squad. You yeah. must have a big squad. And you must have players who can do the job any day. All right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, just stand by. Uh, there's still a lot to, to, to talk about. I want to quickly get Bolu's thoughts on some of the things you said before we go to the uh, CAF Confederation Cup. Bolu, a quick response. We've said all the things that went wrong, all the things that went bad. Is there anything that could be said in their defense? Like, for the, the reason, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. It's a very hard job to do on the show tonight. But the fact that the league has not started, the fact that they couldn't probably get into shape, is there any other, any other thing you could say in their defense for, uh, respons that, that could say was responsible for that scholar? Well, if there was a league match, probably this weekend or whenever, after that match, you think maybe they're arresting some key players for uh, the league match or maybe they're playing a Champions League final or a league match, they have to. But there's not... Okay, well... <laughs> But there's almost <laughs> nothing this weekend. And the weekend before, there was nothing. Then you need... First legs are very important in football. Just give your best. Like here, if it was a 1-0 loss, you could say, okay, well, it's still close. Just, it was scored 2-0. But 3 deal in football, it's anything is possible. We've seen it over time. The Man City, uh, my Barcelona Bottom game, line, it's not defensible. Yeah, I, I don't think it is. And for um, the Sudanese, they will be coming to the second leg with lots of confidence. If you can walk past them in the first leg, even if you can't do exactly that, we can do similar things away from home. I'm trying to think of what Eyimba will be going through, both the players, the manager, the board, everyone. They would have to check that first leg and see what did we do wrong? What can we do right? They can win the second leg, no doubt about that. Winning is not the problem now. The problem is, can they score four unreplied goals? Or can they win by five goals to one? That's where the major challenge is for them. And I'm trying to pick out where the error is for me, but I can't wrap my head around it. I said to myself before the game, they're going to a difficult ground, but at least they can get a draw. Even a narrow win, it's possible. Yimba, they've done it over time. And people call them the pride of Nigeria. Unfortunately, in this game, it was a disgrace. All right, it was a disgrace. Okay, so uh, that's it uh, on a. But I think we need to uh, uh, pause and go on a break. Let some of the things that we've said simmer, simmer down. And of course, it's not over yet. There's still a second leg to, to play, but it's, it's not really looking good for the Aba Elephants. We need to go on a break. When we return from that break, it will be time to talk about Rivers United, talk about some decisions taken by the league management company, and also travel abroad to look at what just happened in France to Thomas Tuchel. Uh, welcome back. It's time to quickly uh, take a look at uh, uh, what happened yesterday in Bloemfontein. So let's give you uh, confirmation of the results. I mean, it's longer, longer news that um, Rivers United surprised everybody and pulled off that um, amazing uh, results. And uh, I'm not going to water this victory down by saying uh, the opposition. Yeah, I'm hearing some of this, but I, I think if you begin to see all of this, is you begin to water down what these guys went to South Africa and what it did. And it's, we must applaud, applaud them, went away and won. Would they have said that if they lost the match? Um, yeah. I thought they would probably lose or maybe get a draw. That I said before the game that a draw would be a brilliant result yeah. for Rivers United. Remember all the stories of the visa problems prior mm -hmm. to the game? Then uh, on the other well, one nil loss, two one is okay. That I think they could even get a draw. That Celtics are not the powerhouse in African mm. football, but it still doesn't mean at home we know how difficult it is to get an away win in Africa. Then I feel okay. Well, any draw for them, they come home and seal the victory. They're two nil, and the fact that the goals even came towards the end of the second half mm. means 
Interestingly, they got their first shot on target in the first minute of the game. It means they knew what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. They were not joking. They were not kidding. And one of the things I feel is helping Rivers United, they did their good business while they were signing players. Mm -hmm. They even picked some players from Mayimba, yeah. um, the goalkeeper, and uh, we find a name. And I think they, on the other hand, they are doing so well for now. But where the problem I have with... Instead of celebrating your win, I'm seeing some posts of trying to take a diss at the Now, Now, he should be there, didn't let them go for Champions League. One thing everyone is forgetting, there's still one more round in CAF Confed Cup. This is not the final round. Mm -hmm. Then I saw a report. What if Enyimba gets to CAF Confed and win and you lose? Will you come? Focus on the game. Just focus. Settle. Now, they just have to come back to Port Harcourt and chill. Not that they will probably underrate them, no. But have fun. Enjoy your game this time sure. around. Continue from where you stop. Even if you can't beat them, at least get a draw at home and still move on to the next round. I think Rivers United are already in the next round. Okay. All right. So, let, let me see if um, Aikode shares your optimism. Let, let's just go to um, Aikode Ojekere. Um, let's talk about Rivers United. I don't know if you were impressed. Um, I'm impressed. The scoreline is good. Winning away is good. But, but do you think um, it's enough to say that the job is 90% done? Is it enough to say that the job is 90% done or there's still a lot of work to do? There's still a lot of work to do. But first, we must congratulate um, Rivers United and um, Stanley and Uma. Um, the first time Rivers will win on the road in, in the continent. Um, they played in the Champions League, dropped to the Confed Cup. Um, the last time out at Rivers United. Uh, um, so you must give them, I mean, they won 2 0 away. Uh, credit to them. Um, it was a good game. Um, don't forget too that um, Blomfontein Celtic played in the finals of the MTN Top 8. Uh, when you get to that um, tournament, uh, you, you, must, you, 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 must, you must end up end it. So uh, credit to them. They played against a team that played in that uh, final against um, a Pirate and lost. Uh, so um, it was a good game. They won. Then that game is gone. That's past tense now. They must come and prepare for uh, the return leg. Um, it's not over. Um, you mean you could win away, and it, it happened to Aqua United. They won in Congo, um, and um, I, <laughs> the Congolese won. You know, uh, so it happens in football. Um, the celebration should stop and concentrate. Again, it's in the new, it's in the new year. Um, fifth of uh, so that means um, they have um, little or no celebration uh, until that game is over. But you see, by the issue then, um, let me just comment a bit on what you said earlier before the break about the league. Um, you see, as a professional team, the league is a different thing entirely. Is it that you're ready for business as a professional team or you're not ready? Al Ali won the Champions League even in a year when they had Egyptian, um, they had crisis in Egypt. Like a civil any league game, but they won the Champions League. Yeah, so you, as a professional team, you must run professionally. You're either ready for for professional football or you're not ready. That's the truth about it. Because no team in other parts of the continent will wait for you. They are doing their own job. You don't play against North African teams and think that um, you know you don't do you, you leave your job. They will do their job and beat you home and away. It's as simple as that. So let's come back to the rivers. Um, the second leg they should do uh, the right. But for me. He should not even, we see, for our team, we, we keep talking about qualifying for the growth stage. Qualifying, when are we going to win this cup again? We've never won the competitions cup anyway. I will won the Champions League game, but right, we've not won this. So we should think of, our team should be thinking of moving. You see, the teams in North Africa prepare for the World Club Cup because that's where the big, that's where the cash is. You can get the small cash, of course, in the champ, winning the Champions League, but that, that, that's, just, um, that's just the cake. The icing on the cake is the FIFA World Club Cup. When you're going to get real cash, must then be played in that tournament. Got big money. When you play in that tournament, you will touch money and money will touch you and the life of that team <laughs> will change. So that's the big one. So it's not about qualifying. We keep talking about qualifying for the group stage here. We now get to the group stage. And when we're playing against North African teams, we keep playing as if we're doing training matches. And those guys are ready for business, we do the business and get and qualify. Play. I mean, we saw the last um, final, uh, the Cairo Derby. It was termed the Cairo Derby, Al Ali Zamalek, certainly. I mean, that. So the next one now is the FIFA World Club Cup. That's the progression. When are we going to have a Nigerian team play in that, in that, in that tournament? So the likes of Rivers, who, I mean, they, they, that's not their business anyway. That's for the team in the Champions League. But then, if any competition cup, should be talking about can Rivers win this cup? They should be thinking about winning the cup, playing in the finals. Yeah. And not just, just, not just jump into the group stage. They seem, right. I mean, Talking football now, they have an edge over, over Celtic. That's the truth about it. And so it's not just moving into that group, into the group stage. They will clap for them and celebrate. All right. They should be thinking about winning the cup.
All right, I agree with you. Uh, uh, it's high time we get somebody, one of our teams, to win, win that. I could do, before we let you go, um, an interesting thing that a lot of people uh, have been talking about. I want to tap into your wealth of knowledge to ask this question. Um, I don't know if, I, I hope it doesn't catch you unawares, but I mean, do you think, do you feel we're ready to start uh, the league on Sunday as, as it has been announced? Do you think the club's are ready? Do you think match day one uh, is going to be a possibility? Just your opinion. I, I don't. I don't think it's possible. I'll be surprised if it starts. You know, for me, in the first instance, I was surprised to see uh, the LMC come up with some teams, um, um, uh, some that um, giving provisional clearance to some um, facilities or so teams to use uh, their their home ground. The truth is this: you are not ready for you, we're not ready for professional football. If we are ready, we're going to cut the number of teams we have in the, in, in the league. Twenty for me is too big. You look at the serious, the serious leagues in the continent, Egypt, um, South Africa, the PSL, the Egyptian Premier League, they don't have 20 teams. The, league, the only league that has 20 teams in Nigeria, in, in Africa, sorry, is the Algerian League. Egypt, Tunisia, Sudan, Guinea, in West Africa, Guinea is, is, is becoming the serious one now. We should do things seriously. Not everybody can play in the Premier League. You're either qualified or you're not qualified. And it comes down to club licensing. I mean, from, from, from March, April, May, we'll be hearing a lot. Has that been done? The answer is no. We're going to start. You know, in Nigeria, we'll go on holidays. There's New Year holiday coming. There's Christmas holiday just around the corner. So you want to play, we'll play one game or two games and go on holiday and resume after Christmas. We, 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 we like, we like, we're not ready for professional football yet because we always celebrate holidays. If you're doing holidays, that's not professional football. The big teams, I mean, matches will be played on, on, on Boxing Day. That's, that, that's a tradition that has, that, where, where can't we, you know, why can't we have traditional days for matches? I don't think we're ready for the league to kick off. I'll be surprised if it does. All right, I could do it. I want to thank you for your time on the show tonight. It's always good having you. My pleasure. Um, and so hopefully we'll get to do this some other time. Certainly. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, I, I could you talk about something I want us to quickly. Uh, that's not supposed to be the next thing we're talking about, but since you already talked about it, let's talk about some stadiums that have been giving provisional clearance. And uh, that is the worrying signal for some of us uh, because if, if with all that has been said, we're turning a new leaf, we're hoping that some of these things, but provisional, it means just back to status quo. That's the way it has been uh, interpreted in some quarters. You have uh, the Agege Stadium in Lagos, uh, all of the stadiums being given uh, temporary approval. Dan Iam Stadium in Oweri, there's New Jersey Stadium, the Lafia Township Stadium, Ifan Yuba Stadium in Newi, you have the Akure Township Stadium, Delta State. Polytechnic Stadium in Ozoro, uh, seven of them. I, 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 how, does, how do you receive all of this? To me, just look at back to status quo. The first question is, what happened? How did they suddenly get temporary approval? Because um, they gave some um, things that were wrong: mm -hmm. floodlights, bad pitches, fix all of these things, poor entries, and talking. everything. Then, I don't know about all these other cities, but I'm 100 percent sure about Agege. The games I saw at Agege Stadium last season, when it's getting dark. There are floodlights there, but they are not complete. Yeah. Each stand, you will see at least four lights missing. And the way the floodlights is set, if one light is missing, you will notice the spot on the pitch. You will mm -hmm. definitely... Then if about maybe 15 And it makes it lights, impossible for coverage. Yeah. Looking because at it from our own perspective. If it gets to that dark area, no matter how good your camera is, you will notice the difference. Then I, they're telling me they fix all those. Okay. They fix floodlights. Let's come to the entries. They said there must be multiple entries and multiple exits. Mm -hmm. I, gig, I was at, at least at, at gig, this December. And it, the entries and exits are not added. So then what did you see to it? I remember when they initially announced that these stadiums were approved. The first question I asked was, all these approved stadiums, do you even have evidence? Maybe pictorial evidence or video that you recorded. And tell these guys, this is what... Because I'm sure they were not allowed to travel those periods then. This is what I want you guys' stadium to look like. Look at uh, Bolu Stadium. It is well safe, flood like mm -hmm. pitch, everything. Then for you to have the ME Stadium to be approved. It so pass this or match this. this. But suddenly nothing. Uh, Mojikere talked about the licensing. It's been over six months they talked about like, and I know the sport minister came out ranting, telling us if it means we have only five clubs that will have this, the, 
I'm not sure one club, had, because I'm sure the way we <sighs> run things, if one club had fulfilled all those licensing rules, believe me, they would have been ranting about it. We are the first club to do this. The only one we heard was, I think, two or three clubs saying they have the 200 million. Yeah. That's the only thing we heard, I think, including of Rangers or Rivers. Then if one club fulfilled just maybe 5% of all the conditions we have, then we are not ready. Sure. Uh, we talked about the uh, media team. They've not said anything about coverage, how the people will stream. We only heard they want to partner with a media, how, uh, a telecom service on blah, blah, blah. We only heard. And those Three are days to a supposed opening. start date. And you still have all of this. It's very confusing. But, but I don't want us to paint a gloomy. That's what it is, <laughs> truthfully. But, you know, let's just... Let's just fold our hands and see, and see. And, and see what will happen. And if we, if we do start, then we'll, we'll be back here to talk about it. And if all of those conditions are met, we'll also be back here to talk about it. Let's continue with that series that we talked about, Know Your Club. Let's talk about the positives. Let's start with Worry Wolves uh, on the show tonight. Uh, Worry Wolves, there you have it. The club was founded in 2007. Uh, the nickname, they are the Seasiders. The Twitter handle. And of course, when we mention these Twitter handles, you, you, you could try to, I mean, see how active they are, ask for information and, and all of that. So uh, that's their Twitter handle right there on screen, Worry at underscore Wolves FC, their stadium is the Worry uh, Stadium in the other states. The coach is Evans Ogeyi. Uh, of course, their captain is uh, Good Luck or Mama Do. Uh, you have uh, the administrator guy in charge, Moses Etu. Okay, so what are they? What are they been doing? What are they been doing? Uh, you have uh, their new signings. You have uh, uh, you have John Paul Chinedu. You have uh, Dave EJ. You have uh, Ufoma and uh, 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 Koko. I hope I pronounced this right. <laughs> it's from Delta Force, and um, you have seen players from Sunshine Stars, Delta Force. Uh, Adamawa United, these are some of the players they've been able to acquire. It looks lame, but at least they've done something. That's where I'm going. They're probably one of the clubs with the fewer signings. Yeah. And I think as much as we criticize, it's good to mention that this season, maybe because of the pandemic, it's probably the first time we are not seeing clubs signing 30 players. No clear uh, Releasing no clear 40 yes. players and yeah. everything. I think it's good step by step. Just five players, two from two clubs each, yeah. then one from Sunshine Stars. But it's important to note that uh, one of their biggest success or achievements is finishing... Um, mm -hmm. I think they finished um, second or so. Uh, yeah, then they went to Champions League, but they didn't go past the first round. They've not been so good. Well, most of our clubs have not been so good on the continent. Then the CAF Champions League, CAF Confed Cup, they got to the second round. But... Seeing their game last year, I think they improved the beat. Um, they threatened uh, MFM where they played at the Tesla mm -hmm. Balogo Stadium. They narrowly drew that game. They could have won MFM scored a late goal. But this season again is another chance for yeah. them to stake their claim. And if there's one chairman in the whole of MPFL <laughs> that is very outspoken, he cares about the money, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. right. he says it's my. Remember when the palliative uh, was given to clubs and everyone just kept quiet? He was the one who came out and told them, but it is 50% you paid us. You've not paid the balance, so this is how we'll Get share. Get facts right. <laughs> let us know when you will pay the balance. I All think right. I like him for that. All he right. always clear the air whenever you want him to. Okay, so uh, that's what it was in your picture. And, of course, let's listen to uh, some of the you know, critical stakeholders at Worry Wolves, how they're preparing for the new season. We'll get to listen to that. Then we'll come back for more sports tonight. We, we have been in precision for some period. And uh, the precision is graduating to the first competitive match, which is the first phase of the league. And I have inculcated into them for you to be a winner, for you to be a champion, you must take every match with every sense of responsibility. You must take it as it comes. We know it's a marathon league, you understand, but if you are serious from the beginning, and take every match as it comes with every sense of responsibility, you will be able to attain your... Because I've been able to inculcate that to the players. You have to be, have that self-belief that you can do it. And I have even recited a situation where we have uh, Asen Wenga in Asena, and I think specifically 2000 and 2003 season, where Asena went on beating in the league. It's possible. And I told them to, and whatever you allow to dominate your mind will rule your world. Going by the team that played against Plateau United, you see, we, we had, we gathered that Simba had played 11 league competitive matches before facing the Nigerian team. 
you see, and then the friendly matches we play here, you can actually equate it to competitive situation. Yeah, I believe we have a record with them because last season we went there and we almost ran out with a win. So we believe this time as we go there, we're going to win because we are fully prepared and motivated to go there and win. The philanthropists in Delta State should not leave the job for the government alone. They should try as much as possible to rally around. The fans, every other person should rally around. And another thing what we are lacking is that the big guys, they don't watch us. We need them. We need the commissioners to come and watch us, motivate us. For example, the commissioner for higher education, Professor Mobogari, actually assisted us in getting this place. He showed personal interest, and we need something like that that will encourage the boys. Yeah, you listen to Evans Ogeni, Good Luck, Konamado, and Moses Etu. Uh, all of them speaking ahead of uh, what's expected to be the start of the new season until we are told otherwise. We will still, fingers crossed that hopefully everything starts on Sunday. All right, Balu, uh, I think we still have a little more time to talk about another team uh, um, in continuation of the Know Your Club series, and this time is Lobby Stars. Lobby Stars is founded in uh, 1980. They're called, um, their nickname is the Pride of Bainway. They are, uh, the Twitter handle is Lobby Stars, at Lobby Stars FC. Uh, the, the stadium is the Upper Aku Stadium in Makodi. Um, coach is Kabir Dogo, well known in um, domestic league circles. Captain is Daniel Atsaka. You have uh, the administrator, a friend of the house, Mike Idoko. Is the administrator of Lobby Star. So, what are they? What have they been up to? Um, that's it on your screen. You have uh, players from Casino United, Dakada from Aimba. Uh, I mean, Onua Chukuka Chuk, is uh, someone. A lot of us, if you're a Lagos, you know, played for MFM, MFM went to Aimba. Now it's with Lobby Stars, uh, Basi. I mean. Look at this name, Shekwa Libyosu, Kenneth James, you have uh, Chidera Chileku, uh, you know, from FC, if I you back. I mean, this about 10, 11 players. This is not lean. It's a statement of intent. Uh, but you, know, you, you never can tell until the league starts yeah. anyway. Well, first of all, you could hear what he was talking about. Uh, we narrowly won the last uh -huh. match. He was talking about um, MFM. Yeah. Remember when they played in Lagos and for Lobby Stars, they will be going away to Ifa Yumba. Mm -hmm. But uh, one player I'm really happy for amongst all the signing is Onoha. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people, for whatever reason, he's not getting a color to the Super Eagles. But I don't think anybody in the entire Super Eagles midfield has the midfield control like Onoha does. Mm -hmm. For anyone that saw him play at the Agigi, he had the bond with uh, Sikro Latuboso and Steve. You know, they backed them. The trial was outstanding for MFM in their glory days, getting them to um, the continent. I, I think it's another chance for him. He couldn't get a breakthrough at Eyimba, but now there's another chance for him at Lubisa. Lubisa is one of the story teams in Africa. Uh, the first time we switched to um, Super 4, they won in that year in 99, then they were awarded the title, even though some said they were not awarded this, and, but from what we know, they were actually given title or declared winner in 2018 due to all the old drama of the World Cup and everything. So they're also a historic team in Afri in Nigeria, but just like others, our best stage has been the group stage, and like, you can't forget what Njikiri talked about, we should stop dreaming of getting to the group stages. Mm -hmm. When are we ever going to talk As about if that's the ultimate. Yeah, there's group stage from there, you move to quarterfinal, semifinal, mm -hmm. then winning. winning. Then if it's the Champions League, you Step have a chance to probably match, uh, go head to head with the top teams in the world, the Real Madrid. For this call, next one is Bayern Munich. And also, I think we should aim for more, but Lubisa has been there before. Hopefully, they'll get there again very soon. It, when we are thinking about everybody winning, it means the competition will be tighter. Steve. Look at what it was called, ambition. Going the season on beating. Is it possible? Yes. But it is not just possible with the lips. You have to do more than Put enough. It, it means you, away from home. You must avoid defeat, and that's very difficult in Nigerian league. You must and win stop singing the song of oh, the referee was against us. That's only the that, first yeah. thing. When uh, after he lost, the first thing you hear is we thank God. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing, the referee no, do your job. I tell people if you score ten goals, the referee cannot remove everything. So do your job, get to play your game, good football. We, we, it's good. I enjoyed last season before it was stopped because we were seeing. Probably one of the best away season victories we've had in a long time mm -hmm. in the NPFL. So I hope we enjoy the same thing come this season. All right. So um, let's see how much time we have left. Let's quickly go to England, Bolu, and uh, let's look at the pairings for hmm. the EFL Cup 
the semis, but it's all smiles. Let's go to look at it and see what's going to happen. Uh, both Manchester teams again get to meet in, like in, 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 in the semi finals. Uh, you have Tottenham and Brentford, giant killers, Brentford. And uh, Jose Mourinho has told us he wants to win. He wants to win this. It's important to him. Two more matches to go. But a quick one. Um, in a minute, so that we can talk about Tuko. In a minute, what do you think will happen? Moro would rather finish 12th than to lose his Carabao <laughs> Cup. And uh, people are underrating Bradford actually. They're beating four Premier League teams. It means they can do it again. But I against us, Moro will play on that 20 in it. Premier League match before. You know what? Let me, pause this game. let me pause you. We need to go on a break right about now. So when we come back, we'll listen to Bolu's thoughts on the EFL Cup. He's going to make a call, a bold prediction. We'll see how it goes. Then we'll talk about Tomox too cold and we'll wrap things up. But first, he has to be the break. We'll go for that break and come back for more on Sports Tonight. All right, welcome back. Let's quickly do this. Uh, on the programming note, your multiple award winning channels television will be hosting a special Sunrise Daily Christmas program on Christmas Day. That's tomorrow, Friday, December 25th. It's loaded with entertainment, including a comedy segment. Join our team of anchors from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Again, on the programming notes, uh, your uh, multiple award winning channel television will be hosting a special Sunrise Daily Christmas program on Christmas Day, Friday, December 25th. It's, it's going to be loaded with entertainment, including a comedy segment. Join our team of anchors from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. So just um, write that down somewhere and show that you don't miss it. Bolu, we're pressed for time. Make a call. I don't want your analysis. I want a call. Jose Moreau in the final against ah, his former club, United, or... Pep, I think it should be Mario Pep in the final. Then Pep has won this trophy mm -hmm. three straight times. I think he's going to make it four. Okay, all right. So that's Bolu's call. So you can hold him to <laughs> all, all that he has said. As we prepare to go, let's talk about uh, the man who's like, it's no longer news that Tuchel is gone. Yeah. But of course, anytime a manager gets sacked, we look at the one, the possible the options, one yeah. that could replace him who doesn't currently have a job. <laughs> And uh, it has to be Mauricio Pochettino. Well, um, for Tuchel... Talks are in advanced stages, so we have... Yeah, 74% um, win ratio for them. The sack is definitely not for footballing reasons. I don't rate Tuchel that much, but to a level, he has done well. Then what we've seen in PSG over the years, when they get to a certain stage, mm -hmm. or probably achieve something, they let the manager move, bring in someone else that will continue from there. But Tuchel got to the final. The options, Allegri lost the Champions League final as well. Uh, Pochettino also lost Champions League final, so I don't know what advancement they are looking for. But Pochettino, we know to a level he brought Compared up to those guys now. you mentioned, does, what's lacking? Is it charisma or what? Compared to those guys? Well, guys. it's compared to the teams they lost to. <laughs> losing to Barcelona, losing to Real Madrid, mm -hmm. losing to Liverpool. So I think Tuchel would do well there. Will he win Champions League? I doubt it. But I think in terms of gameplay, man management, mm -hmm. everything, will, but Tuchel needs time. Will PSG Pochettino. Give him, uh, Pochettino. But will uh, PSG give him that time? That's another million dollar question. All right, so we'll see. Um, not, nothing has been announced yet, but if Pochettino gets the job, uh, of course, he's going to have players like Neymar, Mbappe, uh, Di Maria uh, to, to, to work with. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. He's, Never eating his intention, that's my name, he's never eating his intention to get back into coaching. All right, so that's going to be our parting shot on the show tonight. But before we go, let's quickly remind you uh, about what um, we said while we returned from that break. On the programming note, your multiple award winning channels television will be hosting a special Sunrise Daily Christmas program on Christmas Day, Friday, December 25th. It's going to be loaded with entertainment, including a comedy segment. Join our team of anchors from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. All right. So that's it. All right, Bull, I want to thank you for your time on the show. Hopefully, we'll get to do this mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. I want to say a big thank you to you as well. And uh, you are the reason why we are here. And, of course, it's a privilege. We're not going to take it for granted. I'm Yemi Adebayo. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.